Hey everyone, welcome to Towards the F episode 4 of Towards the Future tonight, where we discuss important topics and controversial topics and health-related topics and any topic that is of importance to us as we proceed into the future of our lives and as the world in, in whole. So, uh, my name is Autumn Estadel and I am a self-help coach and motivator to help you live the, your best life. And today we are discussing glyphosate. What, what is glyphosate and why is it so important to discuss? Well, I'm sure you can tell by the title of this uh, broadcast here. It is uh, it's a carcinogenic herbicide, pesticide, that is in our food. So, ah, how did it get there? Why is it there? And why is it in our food, first of all? Because when we think of food, we shouldn't be thinking of pesticides and herbicides, right? Well, unfortunately, that is just how it is because a lot of, um, you have to treat the plants and crops with pesticides and herbicides in order to yield the uh, maximum amount and to prevent bugs and rodents from consuming them. However, it's not always, uh, it's not always uh, going to just end up on the crop that they're spraying it on. It's going to be in the surrounding area. It's going to go into the soil. And ultimately, it's going to absorb into the plant where it's going to be uh, in the final product that you pick up at your grocery store, that you are consuming into, into your body and you're um, absorbing into your body. Okay. So... We have several articles today uh, talking about glyphosate, and uh, I have links to all of them in the description if you would like to check them out, because uh, glyphosate, yes, it is the most widely used pesticide. Um, it is used heavily, uh, more and more so as time progresses, because there's more and more, um, the um, plants are becoming um, immune, not Im immune, but they're, they have to spray more and more to be able to get the most benefit out of it. And I think it was first introduced in like the uh, mid-90s. So we've been doing it for over 20 years at this point, okay? And since then, there have been many problems that have arisen from, from that. A lot of health complications and a lot of health issues that have come up that have been somewhat vaguely uh, connected to glyphosate, but also, it, you know, not so much connected to, to a glyphosate. So there's a variety of things. However, I do think that, that glyphosate certainly has a really big impact on our health as a whole. So, glyphosate is the most number one used um, pesticide, as I said. And there are certain crops that are genetically modified to allow them to absorb, um, will be resistant rather, to glyphosate. So these crops that are resistant to glyphosate that are genetically modified to be able to not be killed when this um, is, is sprayed on them, it essentially then allows the... Um, more and more use of this pesticide on those crops and they usually say um, that it is it's, they don't have to use as much but the studies show that actually it's the complete opposite that they have to actually use more that they're actually using more than they say and they're just saying that it's a less but it's actually not less um, it's actually much more which is why there's such high levels in some of the products we're going to look at in just a minute because if you're a consumer of food then this is very important for you to hear because glyphosate is in your food. Even if you buy organic food, you are not free from glyphosate. You, um, as we will see in the first study here, you may lower your amount that you're consuming by a lot, but you're still be having some sort of uh, glyphosate in your food. Okay, now glyphosate um, is, the mo is the popular ingredient in Roundup. 
okay? So I'm sure many of us have heard of Roundup. Roundup is what you spray on a weeds to uh, kill them just even in your yard, okay? So when you buy that, you're allowing that to be absorbed into the earth as well, which anything you put on the earth or into the earth, it's going to eventually find its way somewhere into the water system and then people will be drinking that usually because you can't again you can't filter all that so it's even in your water supply as well which is why i always recommend you if you're drinking tap water that's one of the worst things you could possibly do you have to get some kind of filter even if it's not a very good filter it's still better than tap water okay so definitely uh, get that as well Alrighty. Uh, so, let us proceed into our first article here, and let's check out what a glyphosate is all about, okay? So the first article here is from EWG, and it says, Breakfast with a dose of Roundup. Weed killer and 289 million cancer verdict found in oat cereal and granola bars. So, glyphosate is at the highest amount in wheat products, Okay. And this is um, oats and granola and various cereals and oatmeal. And we will see in just a moment just some of these levels that are pretty bad. So this, they uh, conducted a study here. What they did was they, they uh, tested 45 conventional food samples and 16 organic food samples of these um, cereals and oat products, okay? Um... Glyphosate detected here, 43 of 45. So only two of the conventional products did not test for any glyphosate at all was, was found in it. Whereas organic, it was 11 products that did not test, that did not have any glyphosate in it. But I'm sure you're wondering, because glyphosate cannot be used on organic crops, okay? Because glyphosate is a synthetic um, pesticide. So it can't be used on organic crops. now. Organic crops still have pesticides used on them, okay? That's one of the biggest misconceptions. So if you're buying organic thinking that there's no pesticides and stuff like that, that's very, very uh, incorrect. That's kind of what I thought initially when I first decided to change my diet and become healthier. I was thinking, organic doesn't have any pesticides in this. No, no, no. That's uh, very, very wrong. And um, yeah, so how does glyphosate then end up on organic crops if they can't use it. Um, we'll find out in just a moment here. But look at that. So the amount um, that was detected above EWG's health benchmark of 160 parts per billion, okay? 31 of 43 that they de detected here went above that limit of 160 parts per billion. That's a majority of the total samples that they tested. And on top of that, Organic, none. None went over 160 parts per billion. Now, of course, they didn't test many organic products, but then again, there aren't as many organic products as there are conventional products anyway. So that kind of makes sense there, but still. 31 attested above 160 parts per billion for glyphosate. So let's find out here what's going on. Popular oat cereal, cereals, oatmeal, granola, and snack bars come with a hefty dose of the weed-killing poison in Roundup. So yes, Roundup. Okay. Glyphosate, an herbicide linked to cancer by California state scientists and the World Health Organization, was found in all but two of 45 samples of products made with conventionally grown oats. Almost three-fourths of those samples had glyphosate level higher than EWG's scientists considered predictive of children's health. So, if you're a parent, if you're buying cereals for your uh, ch child, do you, are you concerned with the food coloring in it? Are you concerned with the amount of sugar that's in it? Are you concerned with, you know, the artificial ingredients and stuff like that? Well, something that's not written on the packaging is glyphosate. So, even if you try to, you know, say, okay, we're, we're, this company has no artificial colors anymore, like... That's the trade tricks, for example, okay? They, let's just say they have no artificial colors anymore. I, I don't believe that that's true. I think that they still do, obviously. But let's just say no artificial colors anymore for, for tricks. Oh, that's wonderful. We're just going to buy it up. Well, maybe it's loaded with glyphosate. Hmm. 
Now, of course, that's not an oat or wheat product, but that doesn't mean that there wouldn't be any in it. And thank you so much, Iraq, for the contribution. Thank you so very, very much. I am very, very grateful, and you really helped me continue making these shows, and everyone else who helps and contributes, and everyone else here watching, I'm so, so thankful. So yes, thank you. Thank you. Okay, so one-third of the 16 samples with organically grown oats also had glyphosate, as we mentioned earlier. Glyphosate is the active ingredient in Roundup, the Monsanto weed killer that is the most heavily used pesticide in the U.S. So glyphosate is the most used pesticide, at least here in the United States. I don't know about other countries, uh, but I'm pretty sure in most of the world, it is the most heavily used pesticide. Um, of course, you know, they. it's all about the um, end result here because... Monsanto is the one who created it, but Monsanto also, they recently merged with uh, Bayer, which is a pharmaceutical company. Now I'm sure you're wondering, what would an agricultural company, why would they merge with a um, pharmaceutical country, uh, company? Isn't that just kind of weird? Well, it's really not weird when you think about it, because Monsanto makes a weed killer that causes cancer, and then Bayer makes drugs that can, cure, that can treat cancer. It's not, it's not uh, so... Um, it makes a lot more sense now, doesn't it? Okay. California jury ordered Monsanto to pay $289 million in damages to a man dying of cancer. So that's actually the last article we will discuss. So keep that in, in mind. Keep that in mind. Okay. And no, uh, Bo, uh, let's see. No, uh, no to your question there. Uh, internal emails obtained by the nonprofit U.S. Right to Know revealed that the Food and Drug Administration has been testing, testing food for glyphosate for two years and has found a fair amount, but the FDA has not released its findings. Okay, so the FDA has known about this for quite some time, and they have found a significant amount in food. But why wouldn't they come out with that, hmm? Well, they wouldn't come out with that because, well, let's think about it here. If they're going to come out with that, they're going to cause a lot of panic for people. They're going to say, oh my gosh, there's all this in my food. So you have to resort, you have to rely on these independent studies here. Because any study that's done by the um, government agencies or by the companies themselves, you never hear those results. They're always covered up, they're always hidden. And just as here, the FDA is not releasing the information that um, they've found a fair amount of glyphosate in food products already. So let's take a look at this a chart here. Okay, let me actually zoom out a little bit. There we go. Okay. So we have a chart here of granola, instant oats, oat breakfast cereal, snack bars, and whole oats. Okay, and I've highlighted a few here for us to take a look at. So they did three sample tests here. Well, most of them they only did, did two. And this is the amount of parts per billion of glyphosate that they found. So the first product on here is actually an organic product. And as you can see, they found none. ND means non-detected. Non so they did not detect any glyphosate. But let's look at the one right, at, right below that. Back to nature, classic granola. 620 parts per billion of glyphosate they found in this product. Whereas the next sample, 170. You see the difference there? 430 and then 400. That one's about close. Back to nature, banana, walnut, granola classes, 30, 30, and then 340. So it's not, it's not even consistent. It's, there is a wide variety here. Giant instant oatmeal, original flavor, 760 parts per billion. Or oh, another organic product, none detected. Quaker dinosaur eggs, brown sugar, instant oatmeal. This is a uh, granola, uh, not a granola, a... Um, Oatmeal that's aimed at children, 620 and then 780 parts per billion of glyphosate. Okay. Oat breakfast cereals, Kashi heart to heart, organic, none. Cheerios, 490, 470, 530, and go, and of course, this will be the whole grain Cheerios. Because the whole grain Cheerios will, will be made of wheat, whereas the non whole grain ones won't be made of wheat, okay? Uh, let's say Lucky Charms. I'm not sure what this thing is here. And let's say 
I'm not sure about the website being misleading. I don't see anything misleading here. Meow. Um, this website, I would say, is uh, quite credible and a lot of information that they provide is quite um, important. Cascadian Farm Organic, none detected. Kind oats, uh, honey, coconut, none, and then 120. Let's go down here, another organic product, none. Quaker Old Fashioned Oats. This is the highest one, 390, and then 1100, and then 1300 is what was tested in this uh, finding here. Okay, that's a lot. Nature's Path Organic. So this one actually has 30 and 20. This is an organic product. And then also uh, Bob's Red Mill Organic has none, and then 10, and then they detected 20. Okay, so they detected it in organic products, and if you can send this right here, Quaker Old Fashioned Oats, you're getting the highest amount of glyphosate. Now, wh who is um, Quaker owned by? Does anyone know who Quaker is owned by? Quaker is owned by PepsiCo. So they are the makers, obviously, of Pepsi, and they have many other su su subsidiaries that they, um, that they own as well, okay? So that's why I always say, don't ever buy from, from the name brand. Always buy from the smaller brand. Mm -hmm. And buying from the smaller brand can be hard because let's just go back up here for a moment here. Let's take um, Cascadian Farm, for example. Cascadian Bar Farm is a mostly organic food company. But they're owned by um, General Mills, I believe. Kashi is owned by Kellogg's. And they make... I don't think all their products are organic, but, you know, so we have to look at, you know, what, um, we have to <laughs> go through the subsidiaries and figure out what is going on here. Okay. And let's say uh, the comment here, they have an agenda. The only agenda that I'm seeing is better health. Okay. So if glyphosate is directly linked with cancer, and they want to then and they're showing that it's linked to, to, to cancer here and they're showing these products here that have them i don't see what the big deal is then with promoting healthier products like organic products that do not have glyphosate and thus are not linked to cancer because of the glyphosate in it so there is an agenda and that's promoting better health just like we all have an agenda i have an agenda to help you be educated on what really matters with being healthy and overcoming obstacles and learning about what is going on in in the world. Okay, so that my agenda is for you to be healthy. That is my agenda. My agenda is not to make you sick and dependent on pharmaceutical drugs. Okay, so each year more than 250 million pounds of glyphosate are sprayed on crops, primarily Roundup Ready corn and soybeans should genetically engineered to withstand the herbicides. So that's what we mentioned earlier. We mentioned that um, corn and soybeans specifically are genetically modified to be Roundup ready so that they can be, um, they can withstand being sprayed with so, so much glyphosate that they don't be killed, that they're not killed, okay? If there's three products you should always buy organic, it should, it, it would always be corn, soybeans, and wheat. Because as we saw in the chart, wheat the organic wheat had the lowest amount of glyphosate in it. High levels of glyphosate are not found in products with... Highest glyphosate levels are not found in products made with GMO corn. So, yes, it's it's the um, oats, as we can see here. So glyphosate is sprayed just before harvest on wheat, barley, oats, and beans that are not genetically engineered. Yes, because that uh, there is no genetically mod modified wheat. Um, but glyphosate kills the crops, dying it out so that it can be harvested sooner than if the plant were to die naturally. Okay. Let's take a look here. Monsanto, with this year, merged with German pharmaceutical company Bayer. So yes, we mentioned that earlier as well. Bayer and Monsanto, an agricultural company and then a pharmaceutical company. Very, very suspicious, when you say? I mean, wouldn't it be interesting if Let's say, let's say Apple decided to merge with a company that made, um, that made, 
Oh gosh, what I guess you know, just use an example as like food, okay? If if they decided to merge with a company that uh, made food to bring bring you the the apple, okay, the apple product, <laughs> you know. Again, you know, it's it's kind of interesting because it's very two conflicting fields there. But as I said, it makes perfect sense when you realize glyphosate causes cancer, and then um, the products that Bayer makes can help with cancer. Hello there, Tom. Nice to see you. So Monsanto knew for decades of the product's hazard and not only failed to warn consumers, but schemed to publicly discredit the evidence. So I believe that is, I'm not sure if they mentioned that in, in any, any of these here, but yes, glyphosate, Monsanto, here we go. A lot of times what they do, Monsanto conducts their own studies on if their own products are safe, okay? They don't they don't rely on other external sources, okay? So it's all done in in house, okay? So Monsanto creates the drug and then they do the studies. And any study that that proves that their their own product is bad and it's um, causing cancer, they're like, no, that's not true. Here are the, all the studies that that we've done that prove that it's that it's safe, okay? So Monsanto is really kind of preventing all the independent research, which as a, a, a person in the in the chat here mentioned earlier, you know, it's, let's say, they don't, the studies are not independently tested. And it's the same thing with glyphosate. It's not independently tested. It's tested by Monsanto and Monsanto alone. Um, because any other types of findings that are independently tested that show the link between glyphosate and cancer and all these other issues, they are not put forward and they are not um, revealed to the public in the same way that Monsanto could reveal their information that says uh, there is no link. There is no, no, no link. The so ISRC classified the chemical as probably carcinogen to humans and has steadily fast descended that defended that decision despite ongoing attacks by Monsanto. 2017, California listed glyphosate in its Proposition 65 registry as chemicals known to cause cancer. So I'm sure a lot of us have seen this. So um, sometimes you buy a product, like a food, a food product, or I've even seen it like on electronics, and it says this product contains a chemical known to the state of California to cause cancer. Okay, it could be like in some supplements, um, such as ones that may have a trivial amount of lead in it, because a lot of times if you get like a protein supplement or some kind of other powdered supplement, um, it's going to have lead in it, okay? And that's just, that's part of the uh, process of it growing and then they have to concentrate the powder and all that, all that, okay? So that is known to the state of California to cause cancer. So they have to have that warning on it. And as you can see here, 2017, just two years ago, that glyphosate, um, California considered it a, uh, it was a chemical known to cause can to cancer. Ugh. And yes, I do very much believe with that, uh, Kelly, that, that it is certainly causing a lot of mental health problems, a lot of physical health problems, a lot of problems overall. Glyphosate. The majority of samples um, of conventional oil products exceeded 160 parts per billion. So if you look at that chart we looked at earlier, it did indeed exceed that, that number of 160 parts per billion. Glyphosate sprayed... Um, Say glyphosate sprayed crops such as wheat and oats are a major contributor to glyphosate in the in the daily diet. Look right here. Look at this. So here's some of the ones right here. Quaker old fashioned oats. Do you eat this product? If you eat this product, you're consuming it's 930 parts per billion of glyphosate. If you buy this for your kids, Quaker dinosaur eggs, 700 parts per billion. And that's what you're giving your your child there, along with probably the um, I don't know if there's food coloring in that, but I don't know. I wouldn't trust anything Quaker or PepsiCo for that. It would matter. Cheerios, about 500 parts per billion of glyphosate, and then the Quaker oatmeal here, Quaker oats, almond, 415 parts per billion. So you can see Quaker is a huge huge amount here. Three of these four products that are shown are Quaker. Hmm. Quaker old-fashioned oats, Cheerios, yes, they had the highest amount. 
Glyphosate was also detected at concentrations of 10 parts per billion and 30 parts per billion in five of the 16 samples made with organic oats. So we talked about or organic oats. Why would they have... Why, why would there be glyphosate in organic oats when glyphosate is a synthetic pesticide and it cannot be used on organic crops? And again, if you're just now joining us here, um, glyphosate is a synthetic pesticide that's the most widely used pesticide and it's not allowed to be used on organic crops, but organic crops was detected with this. And organic crops can have pesticides used on them. So let's not make that misconception there. Okay, uh, organic crops can have pesticides. Okay, so how does glyphosate get into organic food? How does it get there? It could come from glyphosate drifting from nearby fields of conventionally grown crops or by cross-contamination during process at facilities that also handle non-organic crops. And this is from Nature's Path, um, who said this line here. So Nature's Path, this is the company that I buy a lot of their products from. This is the company that I do stand behind and I do support. So if there's one product, that one company that, that you should uh, check out, it's Nature's Path because they are not owned by a large company. They are an independent organic company, okay? Um, because as I said, many organic food companies, if you, if, you, if you go into like the organic section of your grocery store, if you have a, a store that mostly sells organic food, you see a whole bunch of brands that you may have never, never heard of. Like, oh, I'm buying from local businesses. I'm buying from small companies. That's not always the case because you could be buying from a company that is owned by General Mills, by PepsiCo, by Kellogg's. Okay, so you really have to do your research to figure out what companies you're actually supporting. Because let's just say I'm not going to buy the conventional cereals anymore. I'm going to buy organic cereals. I don't want to support those big companies like, like General Mills. Then you go out and buy a buy from an organic company that is owned by General Mills. So indirectly, you're still helping out General Mills. Okay. Okay. FDA released documents that said the agency has found a fair amount of glyphosate in several processed foods. The results have not been released, but could be made public later this year or in early 2019. So I've not seen these reports. I hope these reports come out. That would be great. But um. It would be interesting to see what the FDA has found in with the amount of glyphosate and by a fair amount. What is a fair amount, I wonder? EPA has calculated that one or two year olds are likely to have the highest exposure. So yes, one or two year olds will have the highest exposure of glyphosate. EPA has to deny that glyphosate may increase the risk of cancer because the agency in Monsanto worked together to promote the claim that this chemical is false. So as we mentioned earlier, Monsanto does its own studies about glyphosate, and then that's the evidence that is used. It's not all the independent evidence, it's whatever Monsanto presents. Glyphosate does not belong in cereal. That is the end, that is the end thing we should be knowing about this. Glyphosate does not belong in cereal at all, okay? It's a pesticide. It's meant to be used during the um, process of growing the crop, okay? It's meant to ward off insects and bugs so you can, it can grow and it can be turned into food. It's not supposed to be in the final product. If it wasn't in the final product, we, we would not be here having this conversation today. We would not be having such high rates of cancer and um, um, autoimmune disease and, and mental uh, related issues because it wouldn't be in our food, okay? Let's see, Kelly, um, best organics to, uh, to buy. And honestly, I always say support the uh, smaller companies. If you can buy from local companies, that's ideal. Um, but if you can't do that, if you are buying from a store, um, my best suggestion would be to research like some of the companies. Like if you see certain companies, just do like a quick search, you know, what I always do is I type in the company name and I, and I say um, parent company afterwards. So if I say, um, let's just go back up here. So let's say I do um, Cascadian Farm. Cascadian Farm, have you ever heard of Cascadian Farm, Kelly? Let's see, so Cascadian Farm. I'm gonna search up Cascadian Farm Parent Company. 
What's going to come up? I'll tell you what's going to come up. It's going to be General Mills. Let's just search that up, shall we? Let's just search that up right now. That's Katie and Farm Parent Company. I just, okay, let's see. It pulls up. There we go. It says small planet food here, but if we go... If we go right here. General Mills Cascadian Farm. So this is right on General Mills web website. Cascadian Farm. So General Mills owns Cascadian Farm. Okay. Moving on to our next article here. Uh, EPA, this is a, a recent one. EPA ignored scientific research ignored scientific research showing Monsanto's glyphosate causes cancer. Mm. Okay. So, EPA ignored a large number of peer-reviewed independent studies that linked glyphosate to cancer in humans instead using research paid for by Monsanto to support the agency's position that glyphosate is non-carcinogenic. So that's what we discussed just, just a moment ago, that the EPA is using not independent research, not conducting their own research of any kind. What they're doing is that they're using Monsanto's re re research. And what is Monsanto's research? It is bogus research. It is fake science. It is not actual real science. It is science that they use to prove that their products do not cause cancer. So if they have a thousand... A thousand studies, and let's say two of them show, you know, oh, our product does not cause cancer, then those would be the two that they pull out and present. Okay, so the WHO uh, classified the chemical probably carcinogen. We discussed that. EPA relied largely on studies paid for by Monsanto and other agro agrochemical companies, ignoring the the large and growing body of independent research connecting the chemical with genotoxicity. Okay, so genotoxicity is uh, the damaging effect a chemical can have on DNA, triggering mutations that can lead to cancer. Okay, EPA's assessment indicated fewer than half of these studies, let's say, are not likely carcinogen. Okay. So, 26 of 27 published studies have reported evidence that glyphosate can be genotoxic. So you can say, you know, where are those studies? Where do those studies come into play? Well, Monsanto will say, no, those studies are using false, um, false measurements to conduct their uh, re research. They're not real. They're not conducting it in a proper way. Only we can conduct it in a proper way. So. Monsanto will find any sort of way of discrediting this evidence, even if it's the lamest excuse possible, okay? It's like, it's like, why, ha it's like you talking to, like, a friend, and you have not talked to them in a long time, and they're like, why haven't you talked to me? Oh, I've been busy. That's the lamest excuse you could possibly give, that, I'm, that you're busy. You know, you have there's so many other excuses that are real, that are realistic of what you're actually doing. Maybe you just don't want to want to talk to, talk to your friend but you're not saying that to them, okay? Okay. A company like, allowing a company like Monsanto with a long and damaging history of deception to influence the EPA's assessment of its own product is outrageous. The German crop company and drug company Bayer bought Monsanto last year and since dropped the former company's name from the product. So yeah, yes, as, again, as we mentioned, Bayer, a pharmaceutical company, bought Monsanto. Very, very strange. General Mills, Quaker, and Kellogg's. So that is some of the companies that have the highest amount of glyphosate because those are all conventional products. They don't make organic products. And the companies here actually support trying to get glyphosate out of our products. Mega Food, Ben & Jerry's, Stonyfield Farms, Mom's Organic Market, Nature's Path, One Degree Organic Food, Happy Family Organic, Patagonia, PCC Community Markets, and Amy's Kitchen. So I've not heard of most of these companies. Um, I'm sure most of us have heard of Ben & Jerry's, and that's that's quite interesting that Ben & Jerry's is on board, but there we go. Ben & Jerry's wants to get glyphosate out of our food. Make a food I've heard of. They're a supplement company. 
Um, Amy's Kitchen is another uh, company that I can stand behind a lot. They're independent. They're not owned by any other company. And um, I think they were like some of the, they're like one of the biggest organic food companies that exists. And they're independent too, which is great. And I think that was like the first company that I really switched over to when I was buying mostly organic. So yeah, I definitely support them as well as Nature's Path of these uh, two here, as well as Mega Food if, if you want to get supplements. Um, but I don't personally, I've I don't personally use many of their supplements. I've tried maybe one or two, but it's not something that I continuously do. Okay, moving on now. So our last article here, let's talk about glyphosate and uh, cancer here. So this is actually a recent thing that happened um, last year, at the end of uh, last year. This is in August, okay? You know, Kelly, I was just thinking about that Amy's Margarita Pizza. I was thinking about pizza in my mind. I was thinking of saucy red pizza. And there we go. Very good. Now, of course, um, they also have, since I'm a, a vegan now, there's many options that I can't have from them anymore, but there's actually they're actually expanding with a lot of options now with uh, various food. So that's a very good. Anyway, so moving on to our final article here. So this was something that was really, really interesting to me. And I found this out and I was like really following this closely. I was like, oh, are they going to get away with this? Are they going to get away? And they did not get away. They did not get away. They got charged, but this number did lower by like 200,000. Um, so the jerkers gave 289 million to a man that said they got uh, cancer from Monsanto's Roundup weed killer. Now this situation is a little different than what we've been talking about. We've been in talking about ingesting glyphosate from food. This is not ingesting glyphosate. This is this person is a groundskeeper. So he was spraying it, and it was getting on 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 him, and he got he developed cancer as a result. And the jury found that Monsanto was deceiving the court and hiding evidence, and showed that. They had to present now 289 million Monsanto has to pay to this man. Now they did lower that down tremendously because um, there was like a repeat uh, appeal and I forget the exact situation that happened, but it lowered down significantly. Okay, so it, they never actually rewarded that full amount, unfortunately. Unfortunately, oh, but I'll tell you this: after um, Bear, not well Bear now because it is a Bear now. But um, yeah, after after they uh, this this information came out, the uh, bear stock plummeted tremendously. I mean, you can if you look at like a a chart here of, of the stock, they just plummeted right there because it's like, oh, we went out, we went out of this. The Roundup, the most popular weed killer in the world, gave a former school groundskeeper terminal cancer. What kind of cancer? Non-Hodgkin's lymphoma. That's the type of cancer that, that this man got. Okay. So, more than 800 patients were suing Monsanto just last year, and this number has increased um, quite tremendously since. I forget how many that there are. I think it's like over a thousand at this point waiting to be heard. So, um, yes, there were a lot more. After the verdict, Monsanto issued a statement saying that it stands by the studies, it's by their studies, <laughs> they should be saying, that suggests Roundup does not cause cancer. That's right. We will appeal this decision and continue to vigorously defend this product, which has a 40-year history of safe use and continues to be a vital, effective, and safe tool for farmers and others. Ah, oh, yeah, that's right. It's so safe that it gives people, everyone, cancer and, um, Chronic illness that is so safe. That is so safe. And here's here's the interesting thing. Did um I don't know if anyone's seen this video. There was um someone who worked at Monsanto who was like who was presented with with this cup with this cup of glyphosate and he was to drink it. Okay, and it was like if it's so safe, why don't you just drink it? It's like I could just drink a whole whole glass of it. It's not going to hurt me. He's like, well, okay, we have some right here. You want to just uh drink it? It's like, no, I'm not that stupid. I'm not that stupid. I'm not going to do that. He's not that stupid. Well, <laughs> why is he? Why is he denying that? If if he if he could say that 
he was uh, that he could he could drink it and not have any problems, then why is he going to say and deny it then and say I'm not that stupid to drink it? <laughs> it was quite funny because that guy got really defensive. It's one of those like people who get offended very easily. He's like, all right, I'm out. I'm I'm done with this interview. I'm sick of you. We're not talking about this anymore. You know. It's, it's one of those kind of people. So that's the kind of people who work at these organizations. Really, really nasty people. So this a man here, age 46, he applied around a week of 20 to 30 times per year while working as a groundskeeper for a school district. Mm. He had two accidents in which he was soaked with the product. And you can see here, look, he can get into us developing some lesions here from the, the um, Roundup. How carcinogen or not are the round are Roundup and glyphosate? So, 2015, the World Health Organization na named it probably carcinogen. We discussed that. Okay, more than 800 scientific studies. It says that glyphosate is safe for use and does not cause cancer. So, there are supposedly 800 studies here that show that. And this, and again, this is Monsanto coming back here to say, it's natural he's looking for Anders. Glyphosate is not the answer. So here's the interesting thing about just science in general, okay? You can conduct a study on practically, let's just say you conduct a study on every single person in the world. And let's say your findings are the same with every single person except for one, okay? Let's say that one person, for some reason, they, they got a very bad reaction to whatever you injected them with, whatever you had them consume, or anything along those lines, okay? Like, well, well it wasn't our product that, that did that. That was just a coincidence. That was just something else. When the truth of the matter is, it could very well be the product. It's just that person is unique. Every single person is unique. So. How this man may have been affected by this product, a thousand more people may be unaffected by the same exact thing, if not worse, than than what happened with with him and all all the all the spills. So there could be a um, groundskeeper who got doused with Roundup 50 times and not developed a single issue, whereas maybe he could have only been doused with it once or twice here and then he developed the issue. Okay. But to just flat out de deny all claims such as that and not taking into consideration that each and every one of us are unique and 800 studies are not the whole billions of people in the world, that just doesn't make any sense. So a better thing is glyphosate is likely not the answer, but to flat out say, no, it's not the answer because of the only 800 studies that we have, again, it, it makes no sense because each and every one of us are different, okay? Glyphosate isn't the problem. Roundup is. So here's where we start to t change perspectives here. The interactions between glyphosate and other ingredients in Roundup causes a synergistic effect that makes the product more carcinogenic. So according to this, it's not just glyphosate, it's the synergistic toxicity of the other chemicals in the Roundup product, which I have no idea what they are. You have, I don't know, I don't know if they even tell you the ingredients if you buy Roundup. I don't even know if they tell you. No idea. So, so here's uh, something else that's really interesting here. When it was medically impossible, to, while it was medically impossible to prove Roundup caused Johnson's terminal illness, it's also impossible for Monsanto to prove Roundup did not cause his cancer. That's right. As we mentioned earlier, every single person is unique. So, even if those 800 studies showed that those people did not get cancer, that doesn't mean that one person may not get cancer. Okay? The, the tide is starting to turn, similar to how decades for people to learn that tobacco can be a big contributing factor to lung cancer. So, again, you know, the tobacco industry kept hiding and covering up information that cigarettes cause lung cancer. Okay? And now you see, I think they, they were forced to, every night around 7 to 8 p.m., they're forced on major networks to play an ad that says that they uh, deceived people and that they and that they hid evidence and that um, 
it does cause cancer. I don't know if anyone's seen that because they, they made they made the commercials so boring. It's just like a black background with white text. I mean, it's the most boring thing because they don't want you to look at it. It's probably most people are probably on their phone during commercial breaks. So they can't even hear anything because there's no audio either. So even that they're they're being de deceivious about there because they can't even announce it. Just like just admit that your products cause cancer and just be done with it. You can't take a lung cancer tumor and run a test that prov proves that tobacco caused the cancer. You're seeing the same thing here. Okay. Thousands of cases to follow. Here we go. 4,000 similar cases awaiting trial in various state courts. Roundup is the most widely used pesticide in the world. So yes, as we mentioned, as we mentioned, folks, glyphosate is the most widely used pesticide in the world. It's you, it, as I said, even if you buy organic food, it's likely in there to some degree. Probably not meant much, but you still have some. You know, let's buy glyphosate in this tea. Who knows what glyphosate is in? Glyphosate is literally in everything. Now let's talk about what other things glyphosate is in. Perhaps not what you were expecting, okay? Glyphosate, just like uh, wheat products, it's also sprayed on cotton at the end. Cotton, okay, cotton. Well, cotton is used to make toilet paper and paper towels. You're wiping your butt and your crotch with uh, glyphosate because it's it's in it's in your toilet paper. Glyphosate, uh, let's see, cancer, uh, not cancer, um, tampons made of cotton. Glyphosate is in them. Um, they've they've been shown to have glyphosate in those products as well. Um, let's see what else. Here's an interesting one. Um, animal like. Animal products like animal uh, meat and everything um, that can have glyphosate in it. Now, how can that have glyphosate? Oh, that's that's you know that's from an animal. Well, you got to remember this: most most uh, meat products that exist out there are conventional meat products that come from f uh, factory farms. Okay, um, unless you're buying organic and grass-fed and you know all of that, all of those other terms. Um, you know, I mean it's. You're still killing the animal in the end, but that is your choice to uh, do that and consume that. I'm not, that's not what this topic is about. It's about glyphosate. So glyphosate is in animal products grown on conventional farms because the animals are fed genetically modified corn, be corn and soybeans and stuff like that. So they're consuming high amounts of glyphosate as it is. Okay. Now glyphosate, um, there is an amazing documentary that I saw. I should have had that as a, as as a resource, but I forget exactly what it is. Um, yeah, it is. Uh, it was like glyphosate. The um, let's see, glyphosate documentary. Okay, so it's poison fields glyphosate the underrated risk. This is a wonderful documentary that I highly suggest. I'm going to post that in the in in the chat here. Um, so, and I'm, I believe in this do documentary, uh, there was a farmer who noticed that his, his pigs were starting to, I think they were becoming infertile and that they were starting to have birth de defects. And he found that once he switched over to non-glyphosate feed, that they weren't having that that issue any anymore okay um now uh i'm pretty sure that is in that documentary it could have been another do documentary as well but i'm pretty sure it is this 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 one but he found you know these these pigs that, that he was raising was um having these these health issues because of the glyphosate and you realize that, well, wait a minute, there's no scientific evidence. And they even say in there, there's no scientific evidence that, that, uh, that approves that. But, you know, what's going on then? Is it just a coincidence then that they, they, take, they, they do it multiple times? They, the, the, the pigs are eating glyphosate feed and they're having these issues. And then they switch over to 
or or like I don't think it's organic, but or maybe it is. Or no, I think it's it's non 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 GMO feed. I think maybe I don't remember. Um, but whatever they do, then then their health improves, and then they switch back, and then it's it goes downhill again. So is that really is that really just just coincidence there? I mean, come on. Um, if you do that many, many times, I mean, even our own bodies, if, if we eat something bad or if we're taking something that's really bad and it's prolonged and we're like, I think that's, that's causing this issue with me. And then you stop taking it and it's like, oh, I feel better. And then you take it again. Oh, that's having a bad issue on me. Okay. And then you realize, wait a minute, it's probably this thing that I'm taking or that I'm eating, you know, and then you don't want to do that again because you know, you've linked in, in your, in your mind, those two things. Now, Obviously, uh, causation, uh, correlation is not equal causation. That's that's like the famous line there. But here's the thing: when that when that sort of thing happens, you become conditioned to know that you shouldn't be consuming those things because it causes some sort of issue. Even if there's no scientific evidence that proves what the issue is, you just want to avoid it. Again, so it it just it makes a lot of sense there. Um, let's see what else. The other thing, let's see, glyphosate. Where else is glyphosate? Also, we're, we're about to be wrapping this up here. So if you have any questions, please leave them. Please leave them now. I'm also looking for suggestions as well. So glyphosate. Uh, yeah, it literally is just every, every everywhere. It's just all over the place. Um, something else was very interesting to me. It's also in certain vaccines as well, which is very interesting um i forget which ones it is i think it's the highest in the mmr vaccine um i believe it's from i think it's like a is it a wheat product or corn or like a soy soybean oil i forget exactly how it's in there but it is but they have tested it in there as well um and then other pharmaceutical drugs obviously have glyphosate in it if they use any sort of animal product or if they are using, um, you know, corn, soy, or wheat products of any kind. You gotta think, <coughs> any kind of pharmaceutical drug, they're not gonna use organic. They're gonna get the cheapest, cheapest thing that they can to make the product and then charge you like 10X markup on it, okay? So they're going going to get the cheapest thing they can find, which will be genetically modified corn and soy, soybean and whatever else. That probably has the highest amount of glyphosate ever on it, because that's the cheapest thing to do. Okay, it's very very cheap. Okay. Um, so yeah, as I said, it's it's in everything, and there's no way to avoid the exposure at all. At all, okay. You will consume it one way or another. Okay, it will get on your body, it will get in your body. So don't really worry too much about that. But what you can do is you can limit your exposure. <clears throat> and you can limit your exposure by choosing to buy corn, soy, and wheat products organic at the very minimum. If those are the only three products you consume organic, let that let them be be the ones. <coughs> oh, all this talking. <clears throat> okay. So, I want to thank you all for joining. I'm curious to know what you think of the show. Let me know what your thoughts are. I'm very um, interested in, in your thoughts. I'm very interested in what you want to see in the future of this show. Like, what other topics do you want me to discuss? What other things do you want to bring up? If you have any other articles, send them to me s somehow. You can send them to me on Facebook, on Twitter, on Minds. <clears throat> you can um, post them in a YouTube... Well, posting them in a YouTube comment can be kind of hard because... Um, <clears throat> it gets marked as spam, usually. <clears throat> so, yeah. Uh, so, yeah, let me, let me know what you think. So, let me take a look at some of the questions here. Okay. Now, Kelly, that can be a separate topic on itself. That is a very good topic. 
in itself because I think a lot of people have misconceptions about that and a lot of people that's a very passionate topic for many people on both sides I could say like right now what you've said will anger a lot of people I know that but here's the thing we don't need any kind of anger here okay because we approach things objectively here while I may have my own bias about certain things that doesn't mean that I'm here to change change your mind about everything whatever I say you can look at and you can disagree with you don't have to agree with anything that I say if you think if you think that all I'm doing is lying and being being a complete fart here then that is your that is your um that is your opinion to be able to do that that's your freedom to be able to do that you have every right to be able to do that okay just like I have every right to be able to express my uh, freedom here I'm not going to get angry at you for expressing what you believe just like don't get angry at me for expressing what I believe okay so Kelly th that is a good uh, topic for another time that um uh, that one I would have to be very very careful with because um, I want to be make sure that I have all the correct information there because I know a lot of people will disagree with it regardless. Uh, Prince Rise. Yes, I, I know who you are, Prince Rise. Okay, do other countries use Roundup 2 or just the U.S.? I'm pretty sure it is the most widely used pesticide in the world. Um, I believe, I know the U.K. uses it, uh, France, and uh, just the, uh, Europe in general. Um, I'm not sure about... Asian countries, I really don't know about them, or like Africa, I don't know. Uh, but I know in 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 Europe and the United States and in Canada, it is heavily used there. Okay. All right. So I want to thank you all for joining today. Um, please feel free to subscribe to my email newsletter. Uh, automacidal.com slash newsletter. Um, I also have a live feed, uh, well not a live feed, a, a live page on my website now, automacidal.com slash live. And it shows when I'm live here on, um, when I'm live on, on YouTube, if you'd rather watch it on there, which is probably better anyway, even though it's still the YouTube in bed, but, but, I, have, I, but I do have to have the chat on there as well. Um, and I also have my uh, Twitch gaming channel embedded on that same page. So you can, when both streams are there, you'll be able to see if I'm live just in general. So I do invite you in about two hours at 10 p.m. Eastern time to um, join me over on Twitch. I will link it here. Nightbot has been silent tonight. I don't know why. So I'm going to link the uh, Twitch, my Twitch gaming channel, and we're, we're going to be gaming around 10, 10 p.m. So if you would like to join me, please feel free to uh, come in and tune in. I usually am hosting someone else, so if you go to it and there's already someone playing a game, then that's not me, that's someone that I that I support, that I like, and um, you can watch them until I'm, I'm ready to stream, and then we'll be starting two new games tonight, so I hope to see you there, or whatever else I do, and I want to Thank you all again so very much for tuning in and I will catch you all next week for my next episode, okay? So you all take care and I will talk with you later. Bye-bye.